Back at it with more ReZero reviews from Chibi. This is for episode 4 when we get into the Roswell Mansion and meet Rem and Ram. Ram is still better. Let's get it. I just got... Yeah? Mind fucked. Yeah? I really just got mind fucked. Because of the ending of episode 4 probably. When we go to bed and we wake up and it's just like, holy shit, are we dead? This episode was happy-go-lucky, slice mm -hmm. of life. And exactly, what did he say? Slice of life, happy-go-lucky, any time, in any show that's supposed to have some sort of serious moment or some sort of sadness. If there's any sort of, you know, that kind of element, the slice of life moment simply exists to make the audience have their guards down and get emotionally attached to different characters so that they can hit you in the back of the fucking head and you're gonna feel bad about it because you're gonna remember the slice of life moments. Comedy reminded me of Kono Stuba. I was like, this is, this is pretty funny. I'm having a good time. I mean. Yeah, and Ram carries. Ram's humorous personality hard carries, bro. Ram over Rem so far. I don't give a fuck about Rem saying, oh, you like Onis? Yeah, I'm, uh, I like Onis. And Rem smiles. Don't care. Don't care. Ram is the superior twin right now. It, it was a little lighthearted than what I was used to from the previous episodes. I was like, this is a very good episode. Like, I was sitting back, enjoying mm. it, just drinking some soda. Telling you, man. Telling you, man. Always have your guard up. I always have my guard up because I don't want to fucking feel bad, but... Fuck, the slice of life moments are so good. The All the interactions with Rem and Ram, them roasting us, so good. You know, Roswell too, just like, just kind of, just casually chilling with us. And I know it doesn't happen in episode 4, but in episode 5 where we're in the bathhouse together and shit. It's just like, we're getting set up, man. And I was like, yeah, this is pretty fucking good. A good episode. Surprisingly relaxing, but good. And as I watch it, we get to... You know, the ending song. It starts playing through the song <clears throat> and all that. And the main character wakes up. He looks at his hands. And he's yeah. like... Uh-oh. No cuts. Hilt. And you realize time has reset once again. Yep. He went back to the last checkpoint. And I'm like... What the fuck? What just, fucking, what just happened? So, the mind fuck right now I had from this ending of the episode. I'm like... <laughs> okay, so... Yeah. Episode in nature, very simplistic. There, there, there's one main key or a couple of key points, actually, not just one. There's a couple of key points that we need to really pay attention to, but overall, the episode is very simple. Besides the slice of life stuff and the comedy that we've grown accustomed to when it comes to Japanese anime, the main points of this episode that we need to factor in is that the insignia that was lost, and that's yes. been the main focus for, I guess you're going to say, the prologue of ReZero. Act 1. The insignia was actually an insignia to be the next candidate for the next ruler of the kingdom. For that's right, because the king and the descendants were hit with some sort of epidemic where only the king's bloodline were wiped out. Now we have these insignias that glow red in the center if the beholder is a chosen one. And with that, we have other factions backing each candidate. But one has to wonder, how did the epidemic start? Why would it, the epidemic start? Because it's so specific to the king's bloodline, it just feels like it was very intentional. And what group would get the most out of assassinating the king like this through virus and then having a succession war? Most likely, whoever is the strongest or the most richest backing. Or somebody that just wants to throw the kingdom into chaos, but... Try to think of like the incentives and motives and try to try to figure out like who could it really be. I don't know enough of the other candidates right now. We only know about obviously Reinhardt and Felt and you know Emilia backed by Roswell. But obviously in the opening we see a bunch of other characters and I'm sure they're gonna show up later as well. Instance Emilia, our main female character, she is a candidate to be the next ruler. And so as we know, losing that insignia would be very, very bad. That's but even if we lost it, I just don't see a path to, like, making Amelia the ruler. Simply because of the prejudice of a half-elf named, you know, Amelia that looks like Satella with the silver hair as well, right? Everything is at such a disadvantage for Amelia right now. We do have a backing of the strongest magician at Lugunica, but even he, I'm sure, is aware that, hey, 
Motherfuckers around the world probably think, well, not even around the world, the people of Kingdom, like if they saw Amelia, you think they would vote for her? They wouldn't. They'd be like, taboo. It looks like Satella. This is bad shit. I'm going to vote for the fucking lolly instead. Like, I don't know. I just feel like we are such at a disadvantage for that. That's the meaning behind it. And it makes me wonder how many people are really aware of what that insignia means. Did, you know, what happened last episode, did they know what it means? And also, it's kind of opens up a little bit of a plot point for the previous uh bow hunter mm. that exactly what was the faction that elsa was part of that was trying to get amelia's insignia an anti-amelia faction beyond that i don't know enough right because we just haven't had more introductions of those people most likely she wanted to probably be a, ca a candidate for the kingdom for to be the next king i don't think elsa Elsa? I just don't think that she cares about that shit. The Bowel Hunter wants to become the king of Lugunica? It's not out of question, but my intuitive in, uh, understanding was whatever faction that is anti Amelia paid Elsa a lot of money to do that, and she doesn't actually care about becoming king. Or maybe someone else that hired her wanted to be another king, or doesn't like Amelia to begin with. That's what I'm going with more, because Elsa, when she lost the bid against Subaru during one of those first runs in the first arc, she questioned Subaru, so what are you going to do with that insignia? She wasn't mad that the insignia was outbid by Subaru with the fucking Nokia flip phone. She was probably going to let him go away, that's, at least that's what it seemed like. But then when we mentioned we're going to bring it back to Amelia, that's the part where she was like, no, no, no. So clearly this is all about anti-Amelia faction and not more of Elsa wanting some sort of path to the throne. I'm just throwing it out there. Now, besides that plot point, we also have it when it comes to the library. The, this li that's another good point, right? Only the chosen ones can. It's not like you can force yourself to go to the throne, even if Elsa had those wishes. If it doesn't glow and I don't think it glue, right? It wouldn't have mattered. Library that this little lolly vampire i'm assuming she's a vampire that that's my assumption yeah that's a yeah if you see a lolly it's usually some vampire some sort of dragon hybrid uh some ancient demon i am gonna go on a limb and assume that she is a spirit because of how she calls puck nichan and treats him like family and because puck is a spirit i'm also going to assume that uh, uh, fucking Betty is some form of a spirit because a full spirit is a being that has grown from lesser spirit and has actually manifested into some sort of distinct form. Betty is a spirit to me so far, I think. This little lolly vampire, she's in the library guarding it. She's made a contract with the master of the mansion. What are they protecting? Roswell's Lollicon Dogens. Don't let Reinhardt find the library. We gotta hide this shit from the police. And what we found- But Reinhardt is the police. <gasps> well, you know what they say. Cops getting caught with a bunch of, you know, CP. That shit happens too. Found out in this episode is that all the books in this library are very important. Highly magical books. For instance, have some very classified information when it comes to magic, sorcery, probably hexes, all sorts of shit, okay? Cool. And if anyone was to break into this library, it would be very bad. So you have it to where this little lolly girl has to protect the library, watch over it, and make sure that nothing happens. No book. Right, but the craziest thing is the whatever door passage mechanic, you know? Subaru can just find it every time, and I just feel like it's because of his connections with the spirits. If we're now going to assume that Betty is somehow some sort of spirit, even if she's not a full spirit, even if she had, is a spirit due to the relationship with Puck and the Nichan family thing, and because Subaru has always been known to be good with spirits, he's not getting lucky per se? But he is, because of that connection, able to find the hidden library every time, is my guess. Book is stolen. No one gets in there and reads these books without permission. And this is a huge plot point, I think, too, when it comes to this huge checkpoint plot for point. this part of the arc, the second arc. Because with our main character now in a loop, this is actually the perfect time for him to capitalize on this constant repeating. How See, so? if he goes into the library... And even if he dies, okay, like he gets fucking killed by the lolly girl. Just learn the contents of the books, make usage of the Forbidden Library, for sure. But beyond that, I would have 100% asked Roswell, instead of being a butler, instead of being a permanent guest, 
you as the strongest magical user of the country of the dragon, teach me. Take me as your apprentice. That's the method. That's the approach I would have went. Now, would Roswell think that that's suspicious? Yes, absolutely. Because no matter what we do, because Subaru is suspected to be a spy, right? That is suspicious. Even him getting out of bed and running away in episode 5 as he, you know, woke up and realized that he died. I think that's also suspicious. It's like, no matter what we do, everything is suspicious about us. So what is the only non-suspicious thing that we can do at this point? Simply separate ourselves from Amelia. Because we're trying to be close to Amelia, that is the root cause of the suspicion. Just walk away? No, we can't. Because Subaru is so down bad for Amelia. He's simping for her so much. His only desire is to be with Amelia. So it's just interesting how every decision we make, it is still suspicious in the eyes of Roswell and the people that's monitoring us, thinking that we're some sort of anti-Amelia faction that may even be working with Elsa. Even if he goes in there and dies, as long as he can read some parts of the books, and he, like, he could read them and all that, and learn magic slowly, he can upgrade his strength to where he for sure, but I think there was the gate that hasn't been opened yet, and I'm not sure if reading a book can do that. He could be able to survive and do better things in the future. That's what I'd be doing. If I found out that the library had some top secret fucking information, but then I reset back after I die, I'll keep going there and learning my information. That for sure, that could be very good if our gate worked right. And thinking of Subaru's powers, yes, Return by Death is very fucking OP. If we ignore the psychological impact, if he were able to become so numb to the pain and the despair of that and block that shit out, he, like, it would be unreal the things that he could do. But beyond that, he still is limited by his own lack of individual power. Because he doesn't have, like, an actual fighting power. He's physically above average. His hand-eye coordination, motherfuckers fighting like Jackie Chan in his prime in the movies. You saw the fight against Elsa's. But beyond that, he doesn't actually have some sort of like actual power, you know? No like firebolt, no magic beam attack, no summoning, nothing. Return by death is enough, but beyond that, he is still basically a base human, you know? I would just go over and over again. That's what I would do. I would try to learn as much as I can. And I'm assuming that's probably what he's going to do. Or that's probably going to be used as a future plot point in the future. That library is probably going to teach Subaru in the future. Maybe, Now, yeah. on the next thing we need to look at is also the death. How did he die? So and I still don't know after watching episode 5. Right? I thought the, I thought bro got rabies after the fucking bald dog bit him because he started to get cold and started to trip out, but that's not really what killed him. That was phase one, then phase two with the clanking of metal in the hallway, then bro got his arm sliced off, and then he got his head splattered and we see his eyeball roll over. Clearly this is the work of someone in the mansion, because it happened in the mansion. And I doubt that there's other assassins coming outside the mansion to do it. I'm guessing it's still Roswell related because Roswell is very suspicious of Subaru and was even saying doing gestures like this in episode 4. So I still feel like it was either Roswell or someone uh, ordered by Roswell to do it. So who is that then? There's Ram and Rem, Amelia. I joke that Amelia killed Subaru both times because of the cringe fucking date that she had to be forcibly agreed with. <laughs> I am so mean to Subaru, bro. It's just, every time he tries to force his date onto Amelia, it always feels very one-sided. That's why I always shit on him saying like, bro, she doesn't even see you as a fucking man. And I don't think I'm reaching either. Do you guys in chat genuinely think in the episodes that we're watching right now, Amelia sees Subaru as a love interest? I don't think so. I think that he's just this random kid that's simping so hard and trying to face, like, force himself into Amelia. And Amelia's a bit confused and like, why are you doing all these things for me? What the fuck is going on? I don't know. Maybe it was Ram. Maybe it was Rem. Maybe it was Betty. Maybe it was Puck, but Puck is sleeping. Maybe it's Roswell. Maybe it's the other maid that used to work at Roswell's mansion is gone now for whatever reason. I don't know, man. So, you can assume that he died thanks to the little lolly vampire girl. For instance, she shoved him out of the library, maybe he got killed by the blow or something that she did earlier. Who knows? Or
No, that was the sucking of mana, which then he woke up and then created another checkpoint in the bed. And as he woke up, Ram and Rem is there. That is a fact. And that's very interesting because why did the checkpoint have to after Betty did that? That's the part I don't get. I thought the checkpoint would happen as soon as he woke up after being delivered into Rosal's mansion after Act 1. But it's not it. We had to do a little bit more. We called Drill Lolly an NPC. Then we got shocked. Then we woke up. And that triggered the checkpoint. I can't really make any connections with the Appa guy because nothing really significant has happened. But I guess for whatever reason, an, an arbitrary checkpoint is met once you've you know, dealt with uh, the challenges of the current problem, the current loop. And I don't think that Betty is somehow special enough to create that checkpoint. Maybe she is. I don't know. I can't really make a connection of how checkpoints are made other than you just overcome the current loop's obstacle. And then at some point, a new one's going to be made. Or something else happened. Whatever it was, he died. We know he died. We don't know how, but he was killed in his sleep. Yeah. In his fucking sleep, he was killed. So... And this time, we don't know if he got those, you know, quote-unquote rabies. I think that the hand being punctured was shown in episode 5, but in episode 4, I didn't see it because it was wrapped up by the hand. So... I, that's very interesting how they're kind of obscuring, you know, feeling that way. The, you know, vomiting, the nausea. Because he just died in his sleep and I don't really... I'm trying to figure out like the inconsistencies between each loop to try to figure out what is sticking out so we can point out the culprit there. We have it like this. We, we do know that the master of the mansion was looking at Subaru as if he was a possible spy. Yeah. And they were like, if he does anything, yeah. kill him. And he didn't... But Ram said, no, they're kids. It's going to be fine. So if Amelia is out of the choice because she's our fucking main waifu, if Betty is also out of the choice, right? I just feel like Betty wouldn't do that. Now, and Betty specifically mentioned in episode 5, I suppose I have nothing to do with that. At nighttime, before Subaru, you know, stayed up, he encountered with Betty, and Betty made that exact comment, I suppose I don't have anything to do with that. That was very suspicious. I'm not sure if that was episode 4 or 5. It did happen, though. So for that reason, I'm excluding Betty. So now we have Betty's out, Amelia Puck out, Ram out, simply because she said that they're just kids that's going to be fine, Roswell. So now the main suspects are Rem and Roswell. Rem went on a date with Subaru. Rem even smiled after Subaru said, you know, you're, it's demonically beautiful. Do you like Oni? Stuff like that, right? Demonically possessed. And she was like, yeah, do you like demons? Oni? So I'm, I'm assuming that she is an Oni now because she said that. So that means that Rem didn't do it either because of how much of a fun date was happening. So at the end of the day, it's just Roswell. But that seems a little bit too easy. Known for a big brain show like this, having the most intuitive guy do the dirty deed seems a little bit off. It's either Rem or Roswell, if we go by that decision tree. But I feel like Rem wouldn't have done it on, that, on episode 5 because of the date and how much she smiled. Unless she was lying about it? I think we're reaching at this point. I didn't do anything that really warranted death at this moment. So, that's the question. Who killed him? Was it them? Because I'm going to assume this, you know, anime is throwing us a bone and making us think like, oh, that, that's definitely the person that killed him, when it's probably not. So, who who killed him? I don't know. <sighs> Maybe the battle hunter sneaking into the mansion and killing him in his sleep. <laughs> I love it, Chibi. I do love random guesses like this. Nah, even if you think that it might be dumb, I respect anyone willing to go out there and put out their 0.001% conspiracy theories because that makes it fun. Who knows? But overall, though, the episode was a pretty entertaining episode. It was I didn't great. Expect Both episode 4 and 5 was so good, even though there wasn't action, but I don't need action in a show like this. Simply due to the characters, the dialogues, the world building, the lore. Like, that shit is just engaging. It's just fun to watch. You don't need to give me combat. Now, if you want to give me a little bit of Reinhardt popping off, for sure, I'm going to eat that shit up. But it's crazy how every ReZero reaction is minimum, like, 50 minutes, even on episodes where, like, nothing seemingly happens. But there's so much to talk about. I expected to be this good. And, you know, that, that twist at the end definitely was a great cliffhanger. A very good cliffhanger for this series. And definitely got my hype up for the next week's episode. <laughs> and then the same shit's going to happen. <laughs> 
<laughs> he just dives in his not sleep, but he dies and we go, and now we gotta figure out what the fuck is going on. So yeah, what's your all thoughts on this episode? You My thoughts, you've already heard them, but please guys. Go give Chibi from eight years ago a like and check out his content if you haven't. And like I said, who could have done it? So far, by my logic, Amelia, Betty, and Ram are out due to the nice relationship that they've had with Subaru during those runs. Now, Rem on the episode five run, because we went into the village and made her smile, it makes me feel like she's also out, which leaves Roswell only, but because this show seemingly is a giga brain show, I just can't guess that it's Roswell. It'd be that simple. But I still feel like at the end of the day, Roswell is making the decision and ordering someone if he's not the one doing it. I will see y'all on the next episode.